Assalamu alaikum uh, Dear students uh, In the previous lecture we talked about poetry we talked about uh, poet we talked about different definitions of poetry and uh, the figures of speech and I introduce you to one of the figures of speech simile and we discussed that in detail with examples and illustrations today we'll be talking about the rest of the figures of speech the second most important figure of speech is metaphor because poetry is either symbolized poetry is put either in similes or in metaphors mostly there are other things as well. There is metonymy, there is imagery, there is personification, there is hyperbole, a rest of many more, you know, figures of speech. But most often, poets use metaphors to uh, illustrate their thoughts. So, what is a metaphor we'll be talking about? Well, metaphor is a figure of speech in which comparison is made between unlike things indirectly one thing indirectly is I'll, I'll be uh, you know giving is a figure of speech in which which comprehension Comparison is made between unlike things. Things indirectly. Categorizing them as identical. As in simile. simile. For example, a scholar. Loaded with books. Books. You see the example. He is a lion. He is a lion. She is a moon. Third. One, two, and three. She is a moon. <coughs> okay. Let's discuss it in detail. Okay. Matter. 
well is a figure of speech in which comparison is made between unlike things it is like in simile we compare two different things but these things are always unlike they are not the same if there is sameness found between these two different things by the means of metaphor or by the means of simile both of them act as you know we call figures of speech so what is difference between simile and metaphor this is today's question and lecture all about uh, in, in in which we will find comparison is made between unlike things indirectly in simile we directly chose two different things and we link them together we just you know yoke them together by words like as and like but here is case is different here no like or as is used compared to to symbolize to to illustrate two different things they are directly they are indirectly you know treated together they are indirectly linked together you know bridged together so we'll see examples as well in the you know coming time categorizing them as identical here yani do cheezon ko jo do mukhtalif cheezein hoti hai in do mukhtalif cheezon ko kya karte hain in do mukhtalif cheezon ko hum ek dusre ke roobaru laate hain aur in dono cheezon mein jo sameness hoti hai identical dikhni chahiye ye ye do mukhtalif cheezein kisi angle se आइडेंटिकल दिखनी चाहिए जब ये आइडेंटिकल दिखते हैं लेकिन इनडायरेक्टली दिखते हैं तो इस टेक्निक को मेटाफर कहते हैं सो लेट्स लुक हेयर इसमें लाइक और एज का इस्तेमाल नहीं करते फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्कॉलर फाउंड ऑफ वर्ल्ड स्कॉलर फाउंड ऑफ वर्ल्ड इज टंकी लोडेड विद बुक्स कितनी बेहतरीन और बेमिसाल मेटाफर है यहाँ पे स्कॉलर फाउंड ऑफ वर्ल्ड found of world means a scholar who is thinking a scholar who who is worldly who 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 doesn't get any kind of benefit uh, other than the worldly things is a donkey loaded with books means donkey and scholar donkey and scholar ye do scholar you know who is a scholar and donkey you know who is a donkey ye do mukhtalif categories ke uh, kya kehte hain isko jaan jaandar hai uh, ye scholar jo hai insanon mein ho sakta hai aur ye donkey jo hai iske paas aqal hi nahi yani aqal wala aur aqal ke bagair in do ko milate hain lekin kaun si cheez inko milati hai ye found of world found of world means a scholar who is found of world who does not think long time benefits who does not use his knowledge uh, uh, who does not use his knowledge uh, rationally who does not use his uh, scholasticism um, that would benefit him is like a donkey means agar hum is uh, metaphor ko symbolize karte to aise hi likh sakte hain a scholar found of world is like donkey loaded with बुक्स लेकिन यहाँ पे हमने क्या किया इनडायरेक्ट कंपेरिजन किया लाइक का इस्तेमाल नहीं किया इसको इसके साथ इसको इसके साथ मिला दिया और स्कॉलर फाउंड ऑफ वर्ल्ड इज डंकी मीन्स अ डंकी यू नो एज मच एज यू यूज डंकी कैन बी यूज बट अ स्कॉलर हु गोज आफ्टर मनी अ स्कॉलर हु थिंक्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ मेटीरियल थिंग्स इज actually uh, no different than a donkey okay this is one of the examples and in the second example it's very clear and very used here he is lying uh, in uh, the previous uh, you know technique simile we compared him with lying by word like and as here he is like a lion simile hogi he is a lion डायरेक्टली ये मेटाफर हो गया इसी तरह शी इज लाइक अ मून देन इट इज सिमली शी इज अ मून देन इट इज मेटाफर दिस इज वट इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन सिमली एंड मेटाफर बट वन मोर थिंग आई एड टू इट 
so that you know sometimes metaphors are of high degree high level that are different difficult to understand for example if we make anything metaphorized metaphoric then uh, many other techniques are verbal metaphors we call them verbal metaphors for example uh, e l e p h a n t elephant elephant ko hum kaise metaphorize kar sakte hain yani is lafz ko hum kaise hum istemal karte hain as a metaphor for example uh, it was and e l e p h a n t i n e it was an elephantine task to carry out carry out look it was it's a, it was an elephantine task to carry out means elephant ko maine elephantine bana diya jab maine elephant ko elephantine bana diya here it conveys the same thing but in a very decorative way in a very normal and in a very kya kehte hain isko in a very loose way matlab kisi cheez ko short mein is iski meaning dila diya na it was an elephantine it was like an elephant task it was like a it was a big uphill task but when i say it was an elephantine task means i put this lafz uh elephant in i i i made it uh verb so this is also called you know verbal metaphors Th this is also called a verbal metaphor we can also see these words sometimes in you know high class poetic uh poems and um, high class poetry rather so this is one of the ways how metaphors are used But this is not you know for uh, lower classes it may be Uh, the higher classes as you know you see in milton milton's poetry paradise lost you may find such they are called conceits as well you know high stretched condensed type of uh, you know metaphors okay to ye metaphor ke bare mein hua the second thing is uh, we talking about personification the second category the second uh, you know figure of speech is personification personification lafaz personification se pata chalta hai it is something person se p r s person and isko verb banaya gaya to person verb verbal noun verbal noun isko kehte hain मीन्स पर्सन से पर्सन एक प्रोसेस एक प्रोसेस से इनको यू नो वर्ब को नावन बनाते हैं और नावन को वर्ब बनाते हैं तो इस टेक्निक को पोइट्री में कहते हैं पर्सनिफिकेशन तो पर्सनिफिकेशन में क्या होता है पर्सनिफिकेशन में होता ये है कि हम ह्यूमन क्वालिटीज को एट्रीब्यूट करते हैं नॉन ह्यूमन्स और नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स में जैसे twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are means you jo is pe hai istemal karte hain mostly with human beings you are a smart boy you are a beautiful girl to you jo istemal karte hain humans ke sath istemal karte hain because uh, when we call you you actually we mean we are talking to someone and uh, we are talking to somebody uh, who in return responds us uh, in similar tone but here you for stars twinkle twinkle little star hey you star means uh, he is made a friend like he is made somebody who is talking who is made somebody who is like a human being so this process this this technique in english is called uh, you know personification let's see the definition okay personification ah uh, personification is a figure of speech in which inanimate objects or abstract ideas are treated as if they were human beings or be are having human attributes similarly as i said you know personification is a technique in which 
human qualities are added human attributes are added to non humans are they are added to uh, non living things abstract uh, you know things as well abstracts can not in fun can't be called things because we there's a different definition of things okay let's forget about this thing we will not confuse it here is a figure of speech in which inanimate inanimate means bejaan cheez hain uh, objects are abstract ideas abstract you know something that's not visible something that's only felt okay ideas abstract ideas are treated as if they were humans aise jaise ki wo insaan jaise dikhte theek being or having human attributes ya unme insano jaisi khaslatein maujood ho theek for example death lays his hand i see hands uh, death lays his i see hands on kings example hai death his i see hands hands on kings death lays his i see hands look death lays his death ko kisi ne dekha nahi hai death is not seen kisi ko de kisi ne dekha nahi hai death whether death is like a human being that is like a jinn we haven't even seen jinn death is like a bull we don't know but we have a preconceived notion about death that is having hands that's having you know power death controls even the kingdoms death controls the kings death controls every everything in the world पुरानी करीब में कुल नफसन जायकतुन मौत डेथ सबके पास आती है डेथ यानी मौत सबको आनी है एवरीथिंग हैज टू सक द लिक्विड ऑफ डेथ सो डेथ लेस हिज आईसी हैंड्स आईसी मींस बेरहम हियर इट मींस द आईसी हैंड्स इट डज मींस सरद हैंड इट मींस सरद हाथ नहीं बल्कि इट मींस आईसी हैंड्स हियर मींस बेरहम अगेन दिस लफ्स आईसी हैंड इज अ मेटाफर you can see icy hand you know ice and uh, you know icy hands have been metaphorized with uh, pity less or unkind hands hands are uh, hands that never feel any kind of kindness okay death lays his icy hands on kings his represents his is normally used for human beings so death is considered like a human being constitute here like a human being so this process where an abstract idea uh, is put into human form or put into human uh, you know shape or put into human imagine imagination is actually mm, human like is actually uh, personification so this is the best example of personification and stars how i wonder what you are as already mentioned ji to ye bhi hai aur teesri jo hai we will be talking about then there that is mm, we'll be talking about the irony irony is mostly used by the poets and uh, playwrights in their words okay irony i r o n y irony to kya hoti hai ye irony is a figure of speech which consists of a statement that appears to be praise but is really uh, condemnation yani jo dikhne mein tareef dikhe aur asal mein wo tareef nahi ho wo tanz ho to ye hai यहाँ पे इसने डेफिनेशन दी है इतनी आयरनी की बहुत सारी वो हैं मतलब सिचुएशनल आयरनी ड्रामेटिक आयरनी वर्बल आयरनी आयरनी ये सारे एग्जाम हैं टाइप्स हैं इसके बट वी विल नॉट गो इन डिटेल टुडे एज इट्स नॉट मेन फॉर हाई क्लासेस दिस इज मेन फॉर यू नो पीपल हु आर इन 
11th or 12th classes or in you know 10th class is a figure of speech is a figure of is a figure of speech is me kya hota hai which consists of a which of a statement statement that appears to be praise that appears to be praise that appears to be praise but is really but is really a condemnation but is really condemnation c o n d e m n e t i condemnation but is condemnation ye condemnation hoti hai for example it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of wife pride and prejudice li gayi hai ye that a single that a single man with good fortune that a single man man with good fortune man in position in position in possession of a good fortune of good fortune must be in want of a wife must be in want of a wife okay pride and prejudice se nikali gayi hai sin aaye hain yani ye kehne ka matlab ye hai ki isme kahan pe irony hai it's a truth which it is not it's a truth which it is not universally accepted yani iska kehne ka matlab hai it's a very valid truth everybody believes it that a single man in possession of a good fortune yani wo shakhs jo ameer hota hai hamesha aurat ki talash mein hota hai hamesha you understand aurat ki talash mein hota hai matlab not comes to wife not not his wife all the way but is always uh, you know a profligate uh, can misuse his money what he smart say a person who is in possession of wealth is always a profligate it does something that is not good at all uh, he may fall in lust he may fall in adultery he may fall in different such things because he is possessing power of money he can buy things he can do all the nonsense things that a society does not accept but here he says it's a universally accepted truth that a person in position of good health sorry in position of good wealth and reaches 
may must be in want of a wife ye magar sirf bolne mein aata hai aisa kuch nahi hota hai the something uh, a verbal irony means a person thinks want something else but happens something else kuch aur socha jata hai kisi aur cheez ko hone ke liye so therefore it's not today because you see net speed aapko pata hai kitni zyada hai to isko upload karne mein fir time lag jata hai thank you very much tomorrow we'll talk about two or three other figures of speech till then thank you bye love you all